to go back right to the very beginning. You quickly fell in love with Everton Football Club and Everton Football Club quickly fell in love with you. But what was it about the football club when you first arrived? How did David Moyes sell Everton to you? Um, for me, meeting Moyes and Bill Kenwright was probably the best thing that could have ever happened. Uh, I remember sitting in Bill's office and um, all I said to them was, just give me a chance. And they looked at me as if to say, we're signing you. You know, we're going to give you a three, four year contract. And um, the, the gaffer turned around to me and he said to me, of course I will, Tim. You know, I think you've got something. I think you're raw. But, um, you know, I can utilise you in a big way with this football club. You suit the temperament, the fans. Um, <clears throat> and I knew then, you know, probably the best thing about David Moyes and Bill Kenwright, they weren't just um, managers or owners. They loved the club. Mm. And it made a big difference for me because when you come from Millwall in a club that are so passionate, um, that I fought so hard, you know, we got promoted. We got to an FA Cup final. We missed out on you know, getting promoted to the Premier League and I'd given everything that I could. And this was my chance to, to go to a club um, to try and make the best out of my career and to, to do something special. Were you a bit nervous at the time or a bit intimidated because there were some big <clears throat> characters in the dressing room? No, I wasn't, I wasn't nervous. I was, I'm a fearless character and I felt at home very early. And probably the, the two biggest characters when I signed and someone that I respect a hell of a lot is Tony Hibbert. You know, I used to always just look to Hibbert on the pitch for a tackle if we were if, if if you could see the crowd and you can see the lull, I'd probably look to Hibbert and I'd say, Come on son, just I'll show him your way and you take the ball and also you know, a bit of the player so we could get a lift, so he can get a, a, a bit of a buzz. So him and Duncan and Stubbsy and all these players and Lee Carsley, they showed me what playing for Everton was all about. Let this ball in. That's a good one, it's in! Rio Ferdinand, rather, I'm sure, got the final touch on that one, but Ferguson takes the adulation. And if it is to go to him... It's his seventh career goal against United. You know, Duncan's got an aura. I always wanted to impress him. I always wanted to run for him or do extra or Carsley so he could make something happen for me and then I could get his pieces. I remember scoring against Portsmouth and then, and then Fergie, I expect him to give me a big hug. He'll just, get, come on, go get your next one. Bent. In by Herbert. Driven in by Herbert. And Kale has given Everton the lead. Tim Cahill's first goal for Everton on only his second appearance in the Premiership. And the cheers have turned to frowns and Tim Cahill has been ordered off for his celebration. I remember when you first came into the side. <clears throat> on your debut, we got a draw at Manchester United, which was a great result. Then we beat Manchester City 1-0 away. In fact, if you had your time over again, would you not put your shirt over your head? I'll do it again. That's, <laughs> you know, the, <clears throat> the thing about me is, is I've gone through my whole career with no regrets. And every time that I've played, um, my best moments of my life have come because of instinct. The best thing is silencing a crowd. The best thing is when your fans look to you to make something happen. Now, for me, I was always motivated by <clears throat> a tackle. I was always motivated by um, something in the game. So we used to go one, two, three, four. We used to follow it like, like a ripple. And if, if someone pressed and then the press was 10 seconds late, it breaks everything. Mm -hmm. But even if we had a broken ripple, we had someone that would fix it. You know, so you wouldn't say, oh, Tim, you left your runner. Someone would just come like Lee Carsley and clean it up. Because... You know, Tommy Gravison, a luxury player. Mm. You know, we, we, had to, we had to let him be free. Defensively is not so much his role, and that might mean I have to tuck in sometimes and then Carsley had to do, you know, two players' jobs. But we understood the mechanics. We knew what our capabilities were, and I wouldn't dribble and try and beat three players. My job is to get the ball off fairly once he brings it down, give it to Mikel, 
and get the ball wide and cross it because we want to score. Mm. We want to make an impact on the game. And um, David Moyes was very good at that. He was very good at being realistic with the players, your capabilities, <clears throat> and um, being honest. Um, we signed all for a massive football club, Everton, but we signed because of the history and we signed because of the fans and we signed and we knew them when we signed here. Mikel, Phil Neville, Saha, Jags, <clears throat> Jolene Lescott, Pina. We knew when we signed here, Bainesy. Like we, we were so-called hard-working players. We had definitely a lot about, of, about us, but we were better together. We stood up in the low times, not just the good mm. times, you know. And that, I think that's what made us have that longevity as a group and have so much success um, under David Moyes. What was it about the all red strip of Liverpool that ignited your passion, that ignited your enthusiasm so much? You love the big games, City away, United away, your first two games, but the Merseyside derby, you just, you just grew another foot. How, how else can you motivate your fans? How else, you know, I remember playing for Mill, it was Palace, West Ham, you know, those sorts of games, and I always scored in the big games. And then having the opportunity to make a massive impact on a club like Everton, um, massive players. I remember, yeah, Xavi Alonso, Torres, Suarez, uh, Pepe Reina. The, the players that they had in their team, you know, world class. Not to say we weren't world class, but our, our, it was a whole different ball game. We had to make, make sure that we were the best together to, to have an effect on the game. And I just, I just learned from the group. I just, we just knew that we could change our season with a good performance, even if you'd lost a few games leading into that. But you knew if you could win, it changes the dynamics for the whole city. And yeah, okay, we weren't as successful as, as much as um, you know other groups have been against <clears throat> Liverpool. But um, I tell you what, we were exciting, and people loved to watch us. No other player who's ever played for Everton and played international football has scored more <coughs> international goals than you whilst they were at the club. You got 18 for Australia whilst you're an Everton player. Level with Dixie Dean. Mm. What does that mean to you? Mate, I'm, not, I'm nowhere <laughs> near on the same level as Dixie Dean, mate. That guy is a king. And um, it means a lot to have records at Everton. It means a lot as an Australian um, that followed his dreams as a 16-year-old to travel to England and make it in the second division at Millwall. Yeah, that was me. That was my dream of being a pro, training every day. <clears throat> playing for Millwall was a dream. Kicking on to Everton was a dream, playing in World Cups. But um, I never looked back. I always wanted to improve. I always wanted to get better. And having records with Dixie Dean and understanding who he was um, was massive. But I was always looking to break records and not knowing that you're doing it at the same time. You know, I wish I could play more games against Liverpool um, for one more goal. I wish I still think about the header at home that I glanced from a Benty cross in a derby. I still think about it till this day. Really? I, I was sitting in the crowd and I just look at the same goal and thinking, how the hell did I miss that? You've played football all over the world. What's your answer when people say... What's Goodison Park like? What's it like to play at Goodison Park? Everton is the best place to punch the corner flag or just to lift <laughs> the crowd. No one wants to come and play Goodison. No one. I'm telling you. Especially when it's cold and we're 100 mile an hour and we're throwing in tackles and we keep the momentum, we keep them pressed high and the energy is just constantly waves and waves of pressure. Um, and they, you suffocate teams and you can see when they're on their knees because they tend to kick the ball long um, and you keep penetrating, you, you, you stick them in the corners and you keep sticking it on Feli and again white wave after wave, Baines is overlapping and then Hibbo's going on the other side and um, we're just running around like mad men, you know, just trying to suffocate the other team and you know, football evolves. Everton's bigger than me or Mikel or David Moyes or anyone. But the, the, the best thing is um, we cared. And that's all that matters when you sign for a football club. And I think we all left 
at pretty much the right time. Mm. But you don't really ever leave Everton because you're always a part of it. You've left a legacy in all four corners of the globe, but what's next for Tim Cahill? What's next for me? Um, I'll be involved in football in some shape or form. I always said one day in the future that I'll always be a part of Everton. Same as what I said to Mill that one day I'd go back there and play, and I did. I finished pretty much finished my career there. And I want to enjoy family. I want to enjoy my kids, my four beautiful children, my wife. All my kids were born in England. They want to move back here uh, and spend some time with my friends, Phil Neville, Mikel, um, a few of the boys appreciate and very proud of what Mikel's done um, as a person and as a, as a player. We've always been very close, but I'm heavily involved in football, you know, the business and football and coaching. But I don't want to commit to anything as of yet. Um, but the f first two things on the calendar are a few holidays um, and just watching my kids grow for a bit and continue with the badges and we'll see what happens.